Welcome to the latest installment of our recovery speaker series titled The Spiritual Principles and Traditions of N.A. Featuring Benji W., a highly acclaimed speaker from the World Narcotics Anonymous Convention 37, held in Orlando, Florida, and was the last world convention before the world was locked down in 2020. In this compelling and entertaining talk, Benji W., with 29 years of being clean, shares profound insights into the spiritual principles and traditions of Narcotics Anonymous, offering invaluable guidance for those of us on the path to recovery. We appreciate your patronage. N Generation Project is solely crowdfunded and ad-free. We are able to bring you great podcasts and talks around recovery and eschatology because of your support. Please watch for shout-outs and prayer requests to our latest members in this video. Check our description for information about that as well as our brand new merch store. Stay tuned for our upcoming podcast show, The Ultimate Weapon, premiering at the end of April. Don't forget to subscribe to stay updated on the latest daily excellence, episodes, and insights from EGP. Join us as we continue to explore and disseminate crucial information that has the transformative power of recovery. Now it's time for our feature presentation, The Spiritual Principles and Traditions of NAW on End Generation Project. Blessings to all. Hey everybody, my name is Benji and I'm an addict. There you are. There you are. Oh my, you, you, you must have found a way out, huh? Did you find the N.A. way or what? God damn, make some noise if you found the N.A. way. Shit, I've been waiting for you too. You want to hear something? You know, sometimes the truth can be a little scary, right? And I gave myself two rules tonight. One is just try not to twist the truth, you know, and that's hard for us. And it's certainly hard for me not to twist the truth. And also the second rule I've got is to just say what is important to me. And I just... I'm just one man in Narcotics Anonymous. I'm a Narcotics Anonymous made man, but I'm just one man in NA, and so I hope that I can stick with those. And in the spirit of not twisting the truth, you won't believe me when I tell you this, but my very first girlfriend in Narcotics Anonymous' name was Nilafar, and she was from Iran, and she spoke Farsi. My very first girlfriend, she's no longer alive. Isn't that interesting? My very first girlfriend, you know, and David is here somewhere. David has about 19 days. Well, he has six months clean, and his girlfriend has 19 days clean. And he, you know, I'm trying to get my head ready and get my heart ready and get my heart rate down to, to speak to you tonight. And he was telling me about the miracle of Narcotics Anonymous and how these spiritual principles work and it, the principles brought him a girlfriend and all of this and that. And, you know, I said to David, uh, David, there's something about NA men are just horny men, you know, you know, we're just kind of horny like that. And, and so when I saw the woman introduce herself as Nilafar, it reminded me of, you know, boy meet girl on Narcotics Anonymous campus, you know, and so I didn't tell him to stay out of relationship and, you know, for the first year, I mean, that's our hope for you, so if you knew, uh, that's our hope for you, but in the spirit of telling the truth, I, I got uh, in heat and forgot about the steps and <laughs> the traditions, forgot about my sponsor, forgot about God and all of that, so uh, the nice thing, what I can tell you, is to get yourself a program. Get yourself a program, and you can work out the details of your life. You know, here we are uh, 65 years later, right? You know, 118 uh, countries, you know, 80-something languages. The coffee maker is here. The treasure is here. The GSR is here. The... The, the addict that went home and typed the phone list is here. You know, the addict that all of those Saturdays and Sundays at area meetings and at the regional meetings, 
uh, our world leadership team is here, all the administrative support functions that help carry this message out around the world. So we are here, and you can look around this room and know that our recovery is real. Our recovery is real. You know, this is a real party. I, I brought some notes because I didn't know if I would get overwhelmed by this or this experience or not. But the notes that I put on this paper are from my heart. They are just things that are real. They're not notes to get fancy. There's nothing uh, fancy about this experience for me. You know, I'm a recovering man in Narcotics Anonymous. I can't make my story pretty. It isn't a pretty story. And I've never, man I never met a man in Narcotics Anonymous whose story was pretty. You know, I, I, I say my journey has really been about trying to go from four legs to two. You know, I got here, I was on all fours. When I got to Narcotics Anonymous, honest to God, I was, I was, I was lost and, and I was confused. And I had lost all hope. I had lost all hope, man. Those were some long, long, scary days as I walked the streets of Honolulu. Just walking the streets. I was the kind of addict that I'd walked from sunup to sundown. You'd run into me at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and I'd still be walking, talking about, what's up? What's up? And what in the hell do you think is up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning but a bunch of nuts? A bunch of nuts. And I found you all, and you turned it around for me. So, I, you know, I, I ain't got no fancy language. This is real for me. I've been sitting in these rooms with you guys for 29 years. I've been listening. I've been sitting next to you and listening and sharing and narrating my life and falling on my face. You know, I don't have a prescription here for how do you, how do you know, you just, we fall on our face, we make a lot of mistakes, we learn from those mistakes and keep moving forward, right? We keep moving forward. So that's what I want to tell you tonight, most importantly, is that I'm up here sharing and you're listening to me, but Khalil, my sponsor, said we are a symphony of voices. We are a symphony of voices, and I hear each of your voice, and I really mean that. I, like I said, I'm not trying to get, get clever and get fancy with this shit. I really mean that. And I'm looking down in this area here because a lot of my family is here. A lot of my recovering family is here. the Georgia region, and I love my region. I'm going to tell you, you're talking about the magic. Everything about us is magical. Our circle is magic. Our anonymity is magic. It's all magic. The little boy and his father was, was, was hiking in the woods, right? And the father got lost, and the father was lost for quite some time, but didn't want to tell his son, you know, we're lost. Finally, he sat him down and he said, son, I've got to tell you something. You know, we're lost. And his son looked up at him and said, I'm not lost, I'm with you. I'm not lost, I'm with you. I'm not lost, I'm with you, right? And that's what it feels like for me. That's what it feels like for me. You know, when you, when you are walking around in the streets in active addiction and you can't find your way and you've been reduced down to that dereliction that our first step talk about, the degradation, the, dere the dereliction, the unmanageability, the denial, the substitution. you got all of that going on. You need a miracle. You need a miracle. And there are addicts that's in that first step experience right now, and they need a miracle. See, we're here celebrating our recovery, yes, but we are also here wanting this miracle for the addict that's on his way, for the addict that's on her way. You know, the higher power, the higher power didn't get us clean for us to celebrate ourselves. We have a responsibility. Our moment of silence is our magic. And I want each of, each of us tonight to really 
think about this moment of silence. This is our opportunity to be generous. And one of the things that I try to practice, because it gets routine, you make meetings, especially for those of us who are recovering in the United States. We're the bratiest, the most ungrateful group of men and women on the planet, I'm going to tell you. And I'm here, I'm going to challenge us, those of us who are so fortunate, the, the, you know, the, the country of Panama has seven groups in the entire country, seven groups. And I watched the way we go from meeting to meeting, complaining and whining about this and that. And there are addicts just riding bicycles to meetings for miles. I, I went to a meeting in Barbados last summer and I said, do you have a meeting schedule? The young man, the young black man said, no, we don't, I don't have a meeting schedule. When the meeting ended, he walked up to me and he had written down every meeting in Barbados, seven meetings a week, one meeting a day on this beautiful island, one meeting a day. He'd written down every meeting, the time of the meeting, the location of the meeting. That's Narcotics Anonymous. That's love. That's sharing. And Narcotics Anonymous has given us our freedom and our passport. And our World Services team can't do all of this work alone. All of those countries, we've, what are we going to do with these 65 years? Who are we going to share this experience with? What is our responsibility? What is our responsibility? 65 years, we're very, very fortunate. And the communities that we live in, I love my community. The greatest gift that you're going to get in Narcotics Anonymous is your NA community, your La Familia, the family that you are sitting next to, that's watching you grow up, that carries this message to you. At my first meeting, I was, I was messed up, bro. Just, just broken. And I was smelling bad and I was looking bad and I was feeling bad and I walked into this meeting and I sat down in the meeting and I just held my head down. And every now and then, this, this life-saving message, if you can hear it, that spark of life, I could hear this message and I would look up and the, and the guy would, and when I would look up, he'd be, have this big ass smile on his face and I'd look back down. And then somebody else would share, I'd look up and he'd be looking right at me with this smile and I'm gonna be honest with you, I, I said to myself, what the fuck is he looking at? <laughs> because I had just come from the streets. And I was familiar, and I thought I was familiar with that look, but I was wrong. I, was, I asked myself, what does he want? Today I know what he wanted. He wanted this message for me. He wanted this miracle for me. <laughs> it's magical. But it's, it's, it's magical. And if you're interested, in, I'm going to tell you, the secret here, one of our secrets is to want this miracle for the next woman, for the next man. That's the best way to get it for yourself. I don't know what principle that is, but it's something about wanting this for the next woman, wanting this for the next addict. You end up getting what you want for others. You end up getting it's almost like carrying this message. When we carry this message to the newcomer, it becomes real for us. I end up believing in this message that I'm trying to convince you of. I end up believing in it. And I don't know, that's just how it works. That's just our magic. That's just our magic. And it doesn't matter where we come from, what country we come from. It's anonymity. It doesn't matter. There is an American movie called The Road to Perdition. And this, this movie, at the end of the movie, the young boy, the little boy said, everybody always asks me about my father. Was he a dope dealer? Was he a murderer? Was he a pimp? Was he a gangster? I, and I just tell them he was my father. I just tell them he was my father. The only thing matters here is I'm an addict. Tall addict. PhD addict, 
GED addict. We can let all of that go. I am an addict. That's the magic of our anonymity. Our anonymity is precious. It says take all of the whipped cream off the bullshit and it makes our circle is our magic. And every one of us get to bring our experience to that circle. It's no big shots in NA, right? No big shots in NA. You know, one shot and your ass is out the door. One shot and you're gone. No big shots here. We want our newcomers to know that we see ourselves in them. We see ourselves in them. And we want them to see, we want them to see themselves in us. That's what our recovery means. That's what our recovery means. And we want to just make sure that addicts understand everywhere that we don't exclude in Narcotics Anonymous. We don't exclude in Narcotics Anonymous. As I said, when I got here and I got clean in Honolulu, and a lot was going on, and I was trying to outrun this disease. I was trying to outrun this disease. If you've been here for a minute, you know you don't get to outrun addiction. The only thing you can do with addiction is throw your hands up and say, I quit. <laughs> you know, our surrender is our magic, right? And it's real. It's real. The addict gave me my first pair of shoes, almost like these. Did you guys see my shoes? Did the, did the camera get my shoes? Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful, Jesse, my friend from Panama? My friend from Panama. See, NA will give you your passport. And that's what our predecessors wanted for us. They wanted us to return back to society. This is our classroom. And this is our safe place. This is where the, the material is, the literature is here, the attic is here, the student is here, the teacher is here, the love is here, the understanding is here, the empathy is here, but this is our classroom. But our predecessors wanted us to also function outside of the classroom. It's experiential. Be careful with staying in the classroom. We come to the classroom but we also got to leave the classroom. And the classroom can be safe. We thrive here. We're reinforced here. This is a safe place for, here, for us here. We are productive here. But our predecessors really wanted us to be fully integrated in our societies, in our society. And so just remember, part of our magic and part of our miracle is that we get to go outside of the classroom and practice these principles. And I'm not here to act like it's easy. This is the hardest work I have ever done. Trying to take these principles and make them real, trying to execute this stuff, this, this is not, this ain't pretty and fancy. This is the hardest thing. You think your economy is hard or your job is hard. Practicing these principles is the hardest work we will ever do. Because this magic can get away from you. This, this is the kind of miracle, once you get possession of this miracle, you want to hold on to it. An addict told me, he said, Benji, you're the, kind of, you're the kind of guy that would have elephants all in your living room. You're, you're the kind of, this is, this is the love of NA. This is the truth telling. See, I wanted to come up here and talk sweet to you tonight too. But some of this is not sweet because, see, addicts go to the penitentiary after we stop using. We kill ourselves after we stop using. We portray the people who love us the most after we stop doing dope. So these character defects are real. And we got to sustain this magic. So he tells me that I was the kind of guy that would have elephants all in my living room and I would go outside and I would say, oh, it's a beautiful day. And he told me, you know what, Benji, it's a beautiful day. That is a truth. But that isn't your truth. 
The goal here is to make sure that it becomes your truth. So you need to go back in the house. You need to go in this house, deal with some of these elephants. So when you go outside and you look up and say, it's a beautiful day, now it is your truth. So the magic is real is a truth. That is a Narcotics Anonymous truth. How do I access that magic? How do I make that magic real for me? How do I sustain that magic? The magic is real is a statement of the facts. I got to get these principles. Otherwise, it won't be my truth. It'll be just a Narcotics Anonymous truth. And this is about my participation, me being present for my own miracle, me building this emotional muscle, me not interfering with your growth or me not interfering with my own growth. Because fundamentally, in my opinion, there aren't but two things that we can do wrong here, and that is for me to interfere with my own growth and for me to interfere with your growth. Now, that's a problem. That is a problem. And so we have, we have each other here. We have our classroom. We have the, we're the most empathetic community in the world. We understand each other like nobody in the world. And it's the joy of my life. It is the joy of my life to be here with you, to be in this community. There's nothing bigger going on for me than this. You know, I want to want to I want to talk a little bit here as this clock is moving very quickly, because uh, well, what 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 I've discovered at this point in my journey is that there are things that we are doing that's important. Taking care of my physical self that's important. Going to work that's important. My marriage. My wife is here. My my honey in this bitter land. She's not often here when I share because a lot of times I get into a lot of X-rated stuff, but I'm on good behavior tonight, you know. <laughs> normally, I want to think, normally I talk about my work and my wife and my wee-wee, you know. And, uh, <laughs> but she's, she, she's, she's here tonight, man. And uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> See, I start talking about my wee-wee, I get really distracted. What was I talking about? Seriously. Oh, I know I was talking about the magic, but I was talking about stuff. Anyway, anyway, the point here is what's important and what's essential. And I think this is important because we are enterprising now. We've got this message. We've got, we are attracting a lot of good stuff into our lives. We're busy. We're going back to school. We're building families. We're, we're getting in relationships productive relationships for the first time, we're building businesses, we're building corporations, we're doing a lot of important stuff. We're spending time with our families, important. But my PhD is not a treatment for addiction. I love my wife, but she is not a treatment for addiction. I love my work, well that's not true, I don't love my work, it's just my work but it isn't a treatment for addiction. So we must make sure that as we pursue our life every day, that we are doing what is essential. And what is essential for us is these spiritual principles that guide our lives, that guide our recovery. That's the central work. And you don't want to get busy doing important work and neglect essential work. And the essential is these principles, building emotional muscle building spiritual muscle. There's nothing wrong with trying to improve the material conditions of our lives. We ought to be doing that. I wake up every day, I'm interested in that. My sponsor says we recover from the inside and outside. So our program doesn't have any biases. You can go to The Journey Continues, you can go to It Works, How and Why, the basic text, all of that extraordinary content that our community has given us, that our leadership has given to us. And you, there's, no, there's not a lot of prejudices in that. There's not a lot of biases. Well, I've got to go in here and make sure that I don't have a bias about this and about that. But it's important. That's important for me to say. I wanted to say, 
because I say what I'm living. I say what's important to me. I say I'm saying what I have to say to myself. Benji, don't get busy on important work. Going on a date is important. We need to be trying to extend our hearts into the life of another person. That's important for us. We have enough humanity to do that today. We should go to work. All of that is important. And because I think because we have neglected that for so many years, self-improvement will look like spiritual surrender. There's a difference. I've got to understand what is the difference between self-improvement and spiritual surrender. Because I can go to Bally's and go to LA Fitness and start eating a, a few uh, uh, mangoes and papayas and, and it'll, it'll make me feel good. But spiritual surrender is real execution, real integration, generosity, the generosity of our ability to listen to one another. That's being generous. That's being generous. I have a responsibility to be generous to you tonight. When the clock stops, stop. We've got things to do, places to be. We've got kids in the hotel room. The speaker has a responsibility to be generous as well, and so do you. And your generosity is to sit still and listen. And I know that's hard to do sometimes. But because self-importance will block you from this magic. Self-importance will make you get up and start walking. Self-importance will make you go to a meeting and get on Facebook, in the meeting. Be careful with that. The universe needs to know what you want and it's going to give you exactly what you want. So when you go to a meeting and get on Facebook, the universe is going to say, oh, that's important to you. Well, let me give you what's on Facebook. And I understand. I know it's a new, you know, this is just one man. The shoe doesn't fit. Don't put it on. Don't wear it. But I, I told you I was going to tell you what's important to me. And I don't want to confuse the universe. I don't want the universe to think anything is more important to me than this. I don't want the universe to be confused. Nothing is more important to me than this. I don't know what that, what that was about, but <laughs> hey, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, because our lives is at stake. Our lives is at stake and this is real and we're pretty and we're sexy and we're having a great time and we're happy to be with us. But this is insidious. This is insidious and it's very complex. Remember, this is the first time in man's entire history. Well, we've been on the planet for a long time. And if we're just 65 years in, it took that long to get in this position. It took, this is the first time. That's what we're dealing with. And when you understand this disease, you will run your ass to a meeting. If you understand yourself, if you understand yourself, you will sit down. You will sit down if you just understand this disease and understand yourself. All right, let me flip here because I don't want to get too preachy. I got a note on here. I got a note on here to tell you guys that I just love who we are. I love who we're becoming. I love who we're becoming. I love the way we show up every day looking for solutions for our lives, right? We should feel good about that. You know, we, and, but, but sometimes we don't. But we're so outcome-based. We're so, I need the outcome. I need the solution. But sometimes it's in our aspiration. It's in our seeking. The value is that this is what we want. Look at this room tonight. That this is what we want. We're, we want to be better men and women. 
and sometimes that will build the momentum to get better. So we, you know, I, I, I had to learn how not to put my happiness into another moment. When I lose 50 pounds, when I get my GED, when I get a girlfriend, I always put it in another moment. This is the miracle. This is the magic. This is the moment. I've got to get in this moment. I've got to get in this moment. This moment is real. And I would hear, don't leave five minutes for the miracle, don't leave five minutes for the miracle. So I'm looking, when is the miracle? When? The miracle is right now. This is the setup. This is the setup. But when you're self-obsessed, you can't see any of that. All you can see is yourself. I had a, one of my favorite stories is, uh, happened to me recently, uh, and I call the story is my fancy car and his amazing courage and willingness. And I, he sit next to me, and he started to tell me about my, my car and how much he admired my fancy car. And see, when you're self-centered, you'll just sit there and that's, that's, that's wonderful. But I care. And I understand that God didn't get me clean to celebrate myself or my fancy car. So I begin to ask some questions. And what I learned was that this brother had caught two buses and the train to get to a Narcotics Anonymous meeting. Two buses and a train. And so I was able to take, because what we do is we take that mirror and we turn it around and we tell and we point to the newcomer how he's participating, how she's participating in her own miracle. And I was proud of that moment because he, he, he thought it was about my fancy car. He couldn't even see his extraordinary willingness. And I could tell him, man, do you realize what that looks like? That's one of our indispensable principles. But when you're looking at yourself, I could have sit there and let him puff me up and, and miss his own miracle. Our job is to help each other see how we are participating in our own miracles. I was proud that that's the man that I have become in Narcotics Anonymous. That's what I'm interested in. I mean, honest to God, that's what I'm interested in. My job is to help. I'm not, I don't, your opinion of me matters, but the only, and for me, the only opinion matters is what I think of myself. And I want to help addicts have a good opinion of themselves, you know what I mean? That's what matters to me. That's what matters to me. And you know, once you get up on, when, once you get an invitation like this, you go back into your life. And I, you, it's, how did I get here? How did I get here? And for 29 years, one of my truths is I've said, I love addicts and I love Narcotics Anonymous. It's just that simple. And when the world board called, I said, oh my gosh, somebody, they must have believed me. They must have believed me. And I wasn't saying for anybody to believe me. I was saying it because it's true. It's true for me. I talked about the magic of our moment of silence, right? I talked about anonymity. I talked about our NA classroom. How about our diversity, the magic of our diversity? Isn't our diversity magical? That one was easy for me. When I was using, I didn't negotiate. We'd work in teams. You were, you was a thief. You was a prostitute. You boosted. We put all that shit together. When we were in the streets, we worked it all out in the streets. I don't, at least in the streets of America, we worked it all out. We worked cooperatively together. We worked in teams. And whatever your thing was, whatever mine, we put it all together and we figured out how to get one more. So when I came to N.A., I was open. Oh, my goodness, the, the magic of being open. Look what has happened to us. What happens when you're open? You all know what it like, what comes to us, how you create the magic by being open. So when I came to N.A., I was pretty open. I was pretty open. You could have been, I, I met that woman, and, and she told me she was a professor at Stanford. I told her I was a goddamn professor at Yale. You know what I mean? You, you could have, 
You could have been a cowboy. I put a cowboy hat on, say, let's get one. You know what I'm saying? What, what, you know, one of the things I say in my story, you could have been the damn KKK. I would have put a, I would have wrapped a sheet around my black ass and say, let's get one. Let's go. I'm serious. I'm serious. I ain't have all them biases. I ain't have all them issues, you know, all those prejudices. I was willing and I was open. You know, I ain't know nothing about honesty, but willingness and open, I got them. I got them. Shit, the first time, the topic, the first time, the first time, I got 11 minutes here, the first time that I went to a meeting and I heard the topic of honesty, it frightened the shit out of me. It literally frightened me. I remember leaving that meeting, going to Burger King, and I bought about two Whoppers, two orders of fries, you know, because, you know, that's one of my things, you know, addiction here, right? It's no, it's, it doesn't matter what, what uh, form it takes, food, sex, shot, you know, that's the beautiful thing about narcotics anonymous. This disease is so big, we don't have to pluralize it. We admit it that we, we admit that we are an addict. We are powerless over addiction. No S on it. You ain't got to put no S on it. Stop all of that. It's all coming from the same place. It all comes from the same place. That's our magic. Our, our, the Narcotics Anonymous first step is amazing. You can find your issues in our first step. That's our magic. That's our magic. But the magician has to work on it. We have to study. Our literature is our magic. And it's real. Our steps, our meetings, our sponsorship, this is our magic. This is our magic. Laura is not here. Laura is in Costa Rica. I got off the plane. I got her email. She said, welcome home. She said, welcome home. I'm talking about the generosity of addicts. And this is why we have to go to Australia. And we can't say I can't afford to go to Australia. I know there are some folks in here that can do math. If I start tomorrow, I probably can put $2 a day away, and I probably can get to Australia. There's no point in coming up with excuses. I just got to be responsible. I've got to plan. But it's important that we be in Australia. We be wherever our world leadership team goes. They need us to be there. We've got brothers and sisters that are waiting to see us. We have our freedom, and we can go in directions we've never considered before. We can go to our meetings. We can look around the room, because at every NA meeting, somebody is at that meeting that feels as though they are all alone, and our responsibility is to convince them that they're not. There's nothing fancy about that. That's just real. And that's the realness of our magic. But we've got to scan the rooms. And we've got to get, make sure that we don't block ourselves out from this magic and the kinds of things that keep us away from this magic. Like, like a, a, a malice heart. My sponsor, the first thing he said to me, dude, you got to get rid of all malice out of your heart, brah. You can't move forward with that resentment. It suffocates us. And we don't have an excuse anymore with this generosity, with this message, with these friends, the people that we're journeying with, we cannot justify harming ourselves any longer. We've got to find that principle of regeneration that's in our second step. We have the proof. A lot of people don't have the proof, but we know now through our own stories that we can renew, that we can generate, we can regenerate, that we can restore, 
that we can reconcile. We ain't got to be mad every day with each other. We have a principle of reconciliation. We just need to figure out how to find it. And we don't have to do that alone. We don't have to do anything alone. The experience is here. The love is here. And we practice and we practice and we practice and we practice. And our community is an imperfect community. I learned that it can be imperfect and amazing. And I can be imperfect and amazing. And you can be imperfect and amazing. It's not important to be perfect. You know, I had a fantasy. And I don't know if you ever had a fantasy and you went to the meeting and told, told it as though it was a reality. You went to the meeting and lied. This was a fantasy that really turned me on. And it was just a simple thing where I imagined that I was in a room and my wife was in the room, my son was in the room, my mother was in the room, my sponsor was in the room, and my best friend, Herman S., who lives in Atlanta, was in the room. And it was a beautiful fantasy. And it sort of represented the wholeness of my life, the fullness of my life. You know, and those were the essential people in my life, my friend Herman, my sponsor, my wife, my mother, and my son. And I had this beautiful imagery of that. And I went to the meeting and I lied and I said that that had happened, that I was in the room with those people. And I share this because I just thought about it today and it was like how, you know, it's so unnecessary to twist the truth, right? But we learn that, we grow, we grow. And that was where I was at that point in time when I told that lie. But if we keep coming back and we stay open and we change and we grow, I learned that I could have, I didn't have to twist that truth. I could have said, you know, my friend, my wife, my son, my sponsor, and my mother is in my heart. Because that's the same truth. That's the truth. But I twisted it because I didn't know how not to twist it. And that's the gift of this program. We let it go when we don't need it anymore. There's no virtue in our progress. There's no virtue in our progress. That's important. You ever have anybody in your home group, they start working one or two steps and they get too fancy, they get too big for their boots and they come into the meeting? With, 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 they, with they stroll on, there's no virtue here. If, I'm, if I happen to be doing a few things well, if I'm making some progress, we don't get to take credit for this gift. That's why it's called a gift, which means that I didn't give it to myself. We don't get to take credit for our progress. It's a gift. For, you know, it, For us to take credit for this gift, it would be like uh, it would be like the, the 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 rooster taking credit for the sunrise. The rooster don't get to take credit for the sunrise. All of that splendor, all of that color, all of this diversity. We don't get to take credit for it. It's the sunrise. It's Narcotics Anonymous. It's this simple, life-saving message. It's our predecessors' hopes and dreams and aspirations. It's the addict that set up the chairs. It's the addict that did the phone list. It's our world services team who need our help. They can't do all of this work by themselves. They need our participation. We got to do more than critique their labor, critique their work. They don't need a critic. We don't need a critic. But we need each other. We don't need a critic, but we need each other. This is not about our criticism. That's why we're open. Our community is amazing. 
for me to, I, my, ain't nobody in my house but my wife, my dog, and me. It's only three of us there, and it's not a perfect community, and it's ain't but three of us there. How do we make this into perfection? We've got to be honest enough to realize that, you know what, my own community, my community of self, isn't perfect. My own internal community isn't perfect. It's wrong when we impose that, that absurdity onto each other. It's just another way for this disease to have its way with us and make us fertile and give this disease a firm hold in our hearts. We've got to stay open. Ain't but two things for us to do here. Open our hearts wider and wider. That's our solution. Every time the situation stretches us, every time there's resistance, every time there's resentment, every time there's indifference, or I feel the impulse to intolerance or judgment, that's an opportunity for me to stretch. Every time there's pain, And our predecessors and our literature has given us a lot of guidance, a lot of instruction around how, how we stay in the magic with our pain. Because we can find this magic even in difficult times. We can remember that it's temporary. It's important to remember that it's temporary because we do lose our way. We do lose our way. But we have everything we need. We don't need Oxycontin. If you stay on this path, one of the things I discovered on this path is that there was a pharmacy inside of me. Now that sounds really sexy, and I want it to sound sexy, but it's real. And we feel that, that, that what we feel here this weekend, that's coming from inside of us, that's our heart. It's important for us to know that there is a pharmacy inside of me. Otherwise, I'm going to go out there thinking the pharmacy is out there and it's in here. This is our journey. And we all have gone north, south, east, and west. This glorious fellowship, this glorious fellowship tells us that there are five directions in life. North, south, east, and west, and an inner direction. And our journey is an inward journey. It's an inward journey, and I'm on this journey with you. Good night.